we're going to go from this to this. Correctly assembled deluxe shocks. Stay tuned. So if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. I'm James, and here we do product reviews, product development, and how-tos. And this is going to be a review and a how-to on assembling shock absorbers, specifically these 80 millimeter gold deluxe shocks for our class one comp truck. So stick around. We're going to go over all the fine detail. Um, you're definitely going to need some tools. And specifically, this is probably the most critical. It's the snap ring pliers from Channel Lock, the 926. This is going to make your life a lot easier when it comes to installing the small uh, snap rings that go on the seal pack. A shock tool. This one's going to allow us to grab the shock shaft and not scar it as we install the rod ends. Some silicone oil. I like green slime for dressing the seal packs. And finally, an M3 button head. We'll show you how to use that later in the video. All right, stay tuned and let's get into it. So let's jump right in. I happened to order the drive techs with a gold finish and some extra springs. Um, these are a little random. I think I got medium, soft, and extra soft. And we'll need to tune those for our driving style, terrain, and the weight and weight bias of our rig. So let's pop everything out of the package. Try not to make too big of a mess here. So we should take a look. Really beautiful gold anodized finish here. So first thing, we're going to want to assemble the ball ends. And as usual, we're going to be using our ball end tool. This again, make sure that we don't mar things up as we assemble them. If you're going to pay a premium for nice shocks, you want to take your time, use the right tools. Do it right the first time so you don't have to go back mess with these things later on. M3 bolt through the bottom of the cap into our rod end. And just wait till that bottom is out, just like that. got our caps built. Let's set those aside. We're not going to need those for a bit, nor will we need these rod ends. So the next part, we're going to be assembling the shock shaft and piston. And you can see there's a couple of small grooves here. And we're going to go ahead and get the clips out of the seal packs. So there's a lot of small parts in here. Be careful. All right, so we're going to want these two small E-clips. And it's really easy, easy to launch these across your shop. If I lost one of these, it'd be a nightmare. So the way I like to do these is, one, get it started in the groove like that and drop it. We get it started in the groove. Like that. And then you're going to press down with the clip under the shock shaft. And the idea is that you're not going to launch it across the shop. 
Yeah, big fingers. Not so easy. All right, there we go. So we got it lined up. Press straight down. And you'll end up with that. So these are nice. Feels like maybe Delrin shock shaft pistons. I'm going to fit it over. the shaft. Now carefully, we're going to install that second clip. So right here, I like to put my thumb over it so we don't run the risk of sending that across the room. And we're going to press down. So that's one completed. And do the same for the other three. On to the next step, let's go ahead and build our seal pack. So the order of these are pretty important. So let's see if we can space them out here for the camera. If we're looking at the, I guess it depends on how you're gonna install your shocks, but if you're looking at this end, sort of the non-threaded cap end, uh, the order is the smaller clear washer right there. then a blue X-seal O-ring. Then the white, the white sort of fat washer. Then another blue. And then the large washer. Now we're going to go back and treat these a little bit more nicely. But I built a lot of shocks over the years. And I like to use a little bit of dressing here before putting this, these in. So this is totally optional. You're probably fine not doing this. But we're going to use some of the infamous green slime here. And it just helps wet out these O-rings. So we're going to get a little out and on this O-ring. And we'll drop it in. And we'll put in that thicker washer. I should say spacer. We're going to dress our other O-ring. Getting pretty liberal here and making a mess. Drop that in. And our 
largest washer here. And we're going to drop it, start all over, and let's try that again. And there we are. So I'm just using the shock shaft to line everything up here. So that's what you end with. And let's wipe our fingers so we don't launch another clip across the shop. But this is where you're going to wish you had one of these uh, channel lock pliers or you're going to try and do without. But basically, we're going to drop this into the shock body. Keep it... Jesus. Butterfingers tonight. We're going to keep it flat on the desk. I'm going to drop it a third time here. We're going to keep it flat on the desk. I'm going to put my thumb on it. And we're going to use our pliers. Give it a squeeze. And drop it in place. So what's happening here, the tool is bottoming out. So we're going to come back and we're going to switch out these tips. All right, after that little timeout, we've changed the tips so they're a little bit longer. And I adjusted them so they're almost touching when the tool is fully collapsed. It should allow us to drop this clip in. So let's try that again. So again, I'm going to hold the closed side of the clip with my thumb. And drop the tool in, give it a squeeze, and go ahead and send that all the way home. All right, so you hear that little snap there at the end? That's what it should look like when you're done. So take care. You can see during that install, I was really cautious to keep my thumb over that until I was confident that we had the clip fully seated in the groove. So that's one shock body. Let's go ahead and do the other three. All right, so we've got our seal pack installed on our four shock bodies. And at this point, you need to decide 
how are you going to set up your shocks? So some guys will run a spacer here under the shock piston. And what that does, it's going to limit the amount of uh, down travel or the total uh, eye to eye length of your shock. So if you can kind of visualize, if we were to put a big, you know, let's say half inch spacer here under the piston inside the shock body, it would reduce the shock's length, but would also reduce the available stroke uh, and available travel. So the seal packs from Traxxas come with these little uh, extra washers. I'm actually going to install them on the bottom of the shock piston. And then we're going to go ahead and install these into the shock bodies. And just take your time here. You can see our extra green slime is coming out. And we'll pull this into the shock body. There's one done. Now, the reason I'm installing these little washers is because I want to pull this piston away from the shock body when it's completely topped out. Um, you know, there's probably some argument whether to do this or not, but I like the idea of allowing the oil to sit on the backside when the shock is topped out rather than it being all the way against the shock body. So that's what we're going to do. You can tune to suit your setup. And what's nice about running the green slime is that you're not running those seals dry against this threaded portion of the rod or the shock shaft itself. So you get pretty good action right from Jump Street. All right, so like I said, I kind of arbitrarily pick some shock spring rates here. We may need to fine tune, no biggie. But let's go ahead and set it up. So these all look to be the same. They are marked with a little bit of blue paint. Except this one's a little bit hard to see, but I believe these are all the same. And I have some other springs. You know, those all feel the same. So I have some other springs as well um, because I've done some drive checks on uh, other builds. So this next step, install the springs. And then these O-rings are designed to sit on either the shock body or the spring collar and can offer you some preload adjustment. So kind of like that. So you can see if we were to install on this shock, we've got a little bit of extra preload because of that O-ring. I'm not gonna run those just yet. You can slip them on after the fact on the bottom of the shock collar. But basically, our assembled shock is going to look something like this. All right, so for this part of the video, we're going to be using our shock tool. You'll see this is a little bit different. It's narrower than the one I was using earlier. And that tool is from Tecmo, and it's designed for 1 8 scale buggy shocks. Uh, these are shorter, especially with that internal limiter that I did. So here's the first one done. Basically, we're going to take our shock cap or hat here and a rod in. This is where we had a clearance issue before. And you can see that this tool, we're gonna get all the threads there and we're gonna install these rod ends just even with the last thread. So no big deal here.
So, right even with that last thread. Go ahead and do the same to the last two. All right, so this is probably the most critical step. We've got our four shock bodies halfway built. We've got the green slime on the seal packs. And I'm gonna put a link in the description below. This is just a little uh, shock holder. So we can fill these with oil, let the oil sit for a bit and then cap them. So we're gonna use some 27.5 weight. This might be a little bit heavy uh, but that's okay. It's something we can tune. And I've never run this class one before, so we'll figure it out as we go. Um, but there's a technique you want to follow here. And I built lots of shocks over the years. But one of the things you have to be conscious of whenever you're building shocks is as you compress the shock body, the not only the piston, but the rod is traveling internal to this, what could be a fixed space. And if you don't allow room for the the volume of the rod as it enters the shock body, you end up sort of overpressurizing or deforming things. So that's why these little diaphragms are shaped the way they are. So they can give a little bit as that volume changes as the shock compresses. So let's go ahead and fill one shock up. And you're wanting gonna you're gonna want to go just below the top edge, and now we're going to cycle it. And we're going to see some bubbles come up. So small bubbles coming up now. A bit hard to see in there, but lots of really small bubbles. So we're going to let that relax a little bit. We're going to do the same to the rest. All right, so we've let these shocks relax a bit and let all the bubbles come to the surface. We're gonna go ahead and top it off. Just a slight concave shape there. I don't have to go all the way to the edge. I'm gonna drop our diaphragm in with a curved face down. And we're gonna compress the shock a little bit. So maybe five or 10 millimeters while pushing down on the diaphragm. You see some oil ooze out. And then we're going to let that diaphragm get pulled in just slightly. That's going to make it easier to put our cap on. You don't have to go crazy tight here. The snug is fine. And we've got nice consistent action, no bubbles in the shock. So let's do another one. So again, let's top the shock off. Drop our diaphragm. Face down. Compress the shock while putting a little bit of pressure on the diaphragm. It's gonna ooze out oil. 
Again, about five or 10 millimeters. Now we've got sort of a vacuum there. We're gonna put our cap on. So that didn't go well, we'll leave that in the video so you can see. Let's get the diaphragm out of the cap here. No big deal, let's top it back off again. Diaphragm face down. Push on the diaphragm slightly, hold it in place and compress your shock. A few millimeters. And let's try and put our cap on again. So what happens is as you allow that diaphragm to get sort of pulled into the shock body, it makes it a lot easier to put the shock cap on. As you can see, it went better the second time there. And again, don't go crazy, tighten that down. Just needs to be snug. Last shock. Again, just snug. All right, that's how to build deluxe shocks without um, causing oil leaks later in the future and allowing space for that shock piston to travel into the shock body and have somewhere to go. All right, so those are our four shocks built and we'll put these on our class one soon. So this little shock holder, it's a quick print. I'll leave the link in the description below for anybody who wants to grab it and print one on their 3D printer. And this was just a button head M3 that I was pushing down on the diaphragm, sort of has the same shape. So thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Let me know what you guys thought. Did we do it right? Did we make any mistakes? Do you know of a better way? Please comment below. And if you learned anything, hit that thumbs up and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Have a good night.